Hello everyone and welcome to your regular um, Sunday night catch no Saturday night catch up of what's been going on in the uh, in the Minecraft stream recently. So the um I uh, yeah, should also probably start off by saying if I sound a bit croaky it's because I've just discovered um I've got some covid going around going around so um yeah we're going I'm, I'm using this as a bit of a test to see if I'm actually capable of talking at the moment. So we shall see how that goes. So, what did we do last time? Well, the big thing I did was um, it was get a bit further on with the blood magic, and that meant I uh, I built up this blood altar here, allowing me to there, um, or rather, I moved it over from over there to here, and that allowed me to then have enough space to put these blank runes around underneath it. Um, and these are this this means this is now a tier two blood altar, which means there's extra recipes you can do each time you upgrade it. There's more advanced stuff, more advanced stuff, and so on that you can do do with it. Now I've also attached this tank to it, and despite the gap there, these are these are gen genuinely attached. Um, and this means that any blood that ends up in the altar here will automatically be pumped out and put into this uh, into this tank. And the idea of that is it means I we I can get it sort of stocked up, and I can have other people come in when you use the uh, use the knife and the and the painful armor and stuff like that um, between streams and, and stock it up for me. And it looks like people have been doing that because this is a lovely full chest with uh, thirty two thousand milli buckets in it. Although there's nothing in here, so it appears this is completely full, but this is completely empty, which is an interesting combination, because I'd expect there'd still be a little bit left in here, but maybe that got used up for something, I don't know. But my, so, this is, as I said, now is a, is a tier 2 blood altar, which means I can do more advanced things. The, pro the, um, the problem is, feeding stuff into it is still a rather slow process, because you basically you have to put in things one at a time out of your inventory, onto the blood altar, and then take them out once they finish being magics. Additionally, if you pump this blood back into the altar, it's a rather slow process because the altar, until you upgrade the altar further and put some runes on these blank slates, um, the the altar is quite slow at pumping liquid in and out of it. So there are some improvements that need to be made. Um, my pl I have a couple of plans, um, and they involve putting it, making another two of these um, blood altars. So let's have a look see how expensive that's going to be. Um, Oh, demon plate is the uh, is going to be the challenge with that because I remember this was tricky when we when I first did it, um, and I've, I I the I managed to find some that was produced but from um, loot bags I think I don't know if we've actually got a way of making this yet. Uh, crafting from demon ingots, sure. Compact, uh, that's probably going to be also from demon ingots, yes. Da, 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 da. And pressurizer probably also yes. Okay, so demon ingots come from demon metal blocks, uh, from demon metal. So, yeah, I don't really know. This is we're going to have to investigate where this stuff actually comes from in order to, in order to make some of it, um, in order to make another two of these. But if I do that, then I'll be able to have one of them that's used for as an input, so people can come up to it and empty things like the and empty the this into it. And this will be emptied into it, and it'll be and then they, all the blood can be pumped out of it into the tank and then from there pumped into another altar that will always be full. So there'll be an empty one that there's always room to put the blood into, and a full one that's already always ready to do something. I'll also, <coughs> excuse me, also have a third one which is going to have a blood orb on it permanently, and that allows it to then you to then use the um, use the blood in it for the various magic things, like the ones I was talking about in the last episode over there, where you can make lava out of out of the um, out of the life essence. It's also important to notice that this blood is different from that blood, and you can tell by the colour. This is a lovely sort of darker. Um, scabbier colour, whereas this one's a bit lighter, and this is just straight up blood, whereas this one is apparently life essence. And those are different, and unfortunately you can't just mix the two together, or it won't work. The next thing uh, related to this is all of this sort of nonsense here, and it's, as you can tell, it's, it's a little bit untidy. But this this here is an incense altar, and that allows you to um, to make the, the whole gathering blood process a bit more effective. So for example, if I come over here and pick up this stab, dagger of stabby, and poke myself with it, you'll notice that my health has immediately dropped to like 10%, and it's pulled uh, 3.6 buckets out of my out of my health and got into, into here, so that's quite a lot. Um, and, and the reason that works quite so well is because this is let's see, there's a way of, there's a way of actually interrogating this. Oh yes, it's using the divination sigil. Um, so as you can see there, there's a 60% bonus on this and a tranquility score, which means almost nothing to me at the moment. And the way this works is that the more different things that are in the area around it, the higher this um, bonus percentage goes. Um, there's a limit to how far you can go with the wooden path. You can make, you can also make stone paths that are better. So that's going to be the next step. But basically, the um, the amount of bonus you get is based on how much nonsense you've got in the area around it. So that's why I've got potatoes and water and lava over here. And each extra thing you put in gives you some more bonus. 
Um, but there's a diminishing return. So if I just put carrots absolutely everywhere, I get a lot less than if I had a mixture of carrots and lava and water and netherrack and whatever the nether warts and so on. You can also get a bonus from fire. So we set fire to this netherrack, but we then realise that this ceiling isn't very far above, and it's made of wood. So we accidentally burnt a significant hole in the ceiling above here. Um, I've now put in some stone here, this basalt slab, because it's a nice dark colour. And we're hoping that if we light it again, that will catch the fire and it won't burn through. But we shall see. There's also still some quite a lot of hole up here, so I've obviously not done as much repair work up there as I thought I had. So a large part of the reason that I want to automate this is making these blank runes for um, upgrading it to the higher levels is an extremely time-consuming process. Because each one of these um, takes... Uh, one of these blocks takes... Uh, what? Oh yeah, takes an enormous number of these blank slates. Uh, is that 15 of them? I think 5, 10, 11, 16 of them. Each one of which takes a blank slate block. No, sorry. Each one of these takes a block of compressed stone put into the um, in into the into the blood altar. And this this one requires eight of them. The next one's going to be for uh, 16 as well. And it's just going to go up and up and up for each, each tier upwards. So I'm going to require enormous quantities of blank slates. Um, 16, like 256, 512, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling too COVID-y to do the maths in my head. But it's going to be a power of two. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of blank slates in order to, to do each of these upgrades. So I need to automate it somehow. And that's going to be a, a thing for, uh, for, hopefully for the next stream. Because I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do. I just haven't done it yet. We also went wither hunting, um, which is apparently well we, that that happened on stream. I don't I don't 100% understand that. It's just something that uh, someone said, hey, we're going to go hunt a wither, so we'll spawn one in and then everybody will die, um, which was mildly interesting. I feel it's worth mentioning that I died more times to being shot by Tristan than I did to the wither itself. So um, the friendly fire is very much a thing in this server. Um, we did that in a hole in the ground somewhere because apparently that's a good way to cheese it. Uh, we also did it in the um, in the in the Nether because apparently there's a, a thing you can do in the Nether, and I'll just run over there and show you. So there's a trick where you can absolutely cheat. It's not the Nether; it's the end. Please hold. Right here we go, back in back in the end again. Now this is a, a lovely place because you tend to get ganked by Endermen if you make the mistake of looking at one of them. So we'll try not to do that. There's a lot of Ender Lilies there. I think somebody's been planting them for for later uh, harvesting. So the end is an interesting place because it has these chunks of um, bedrock and these are not at sort of down at bedrock level area. They're, they're high enough up for this trick to work. So what you do is you get a, an area underneath. You have this thing, this, this obsidian here, which allows you to spawn the withers. Um, and then you can spawn them in and because they're three high, they will spawn in with their heads in the bedrock and they can't destroy the bedrock because it's bedrock. So they end up getting stuck there and being endlessly hurt by the bed but by the fact they've got their head embedded in um, in the rock until they eventually die and then presumably this hopper is for picking up all the nonsense they drop and I guess there's probably a chest around here somewhere although I can't see one um, so this is extremely cheesy it's rather uh, rather cheaty and cheesy should we say um, but it is a way of farming the um, farming the withers reasonably safely and I think you still get wither skeletons spawning in nearby who may come and attack you um, I think you can go in and boop it with your own sword if you want and you'll probably get and that 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 for some reason hurts because withers hurt you when you attack them because that sounds fair um so it is it is a way of taking on the withers significantly more safely um so yes we did that we killed a couple of withers one one in the slightly less cheesy way and one in the slightly more cheesy way there's also no endermen around here which oh no there's one over there let's not look at him but it's still it's a lot quieter than i'm used to it being so i'm slightly surprised there but yes, that was that was one of the other big things we did last time, um, and as I, as I stated, said, it was quite repeatedly fatal. And that was pretty much all I did because the uh, the building up, messing around, all that messing around with the uh, the blood altar took quite a lot of time, and all the wither nonsense took quite a lot of time as well. But there've been lots of other things done. Um, there's a market here apparently, and we've got some sort of library in here. Oh yes, this is for um, an enchanting table, which apparently was a thing we thought we might as well build, but isn't the best way to do things in this mod pack. I suggest you um, come along to the stream or watch the video of somebody who knows a bit more about this if you want to know more about it, because I I don't really. I, 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 I know a reasonable amount about my own stuff, but not about other people's. What we do also have, Tristan had... Oh, I've fallen in a hole. That was not, that was not the intention. How do, I, how do I get out? From here, apparently. Alright, so here. Tristan has been experimenting with a, um, a void tree 
thing which produces um, saplings and leaves and wood and stuff for random trees from out of nowhere, which is quite clever. This one is um, random and interesting because it's a, as you can tell by the way this tree is shaped like a pickaxe, this is a tree that does mining. So if I turn it on, and it's a tree that you can turn on as well. Um, this is assuming there are any ores left below it, but okay. So the tree will then teleport any ores it finds, any ores that are underneath it or underneath its area of effect, into uh, up to the surface, so you can then mine them like this. There you go. There's a there's a block of t uh, t basalt tin, so I can grab that, and it just sits there pulling stuff up out of the ground, quite literally, um, and that allows you to then mine it up, which is very nice of it. Um, it's a little bit odd, but um, but it does seem to work. I don't see anything else appearing though, so that might mean we've just run out of um, resources in this block. Which is entirely possible. I'll turn it off though, because we're not quite sure what happens if it keeps pulling stuff up when there's already stuff up here. Whether we'd actually end up losing the resources that way. But at some point we'll probably move this tree to somewhere else and be able to do it all again. There were a couple of other funny... Oh, maybe this is one of the ones that's been pulled up. It looks like the right sort of... It looks like a sort of a, a sudden uh, seam of something on the surface, which is a little bit strange. So that's probably what, what caused it. There's this rainbow tree. Um, as far as I'm aware, this doesn't actually do anything particularly clever. It just has really colourful leaves. And the colour of the leaves is apparently set by its position in the world. So if you plant lots of them in a row, you'll get a nice sort of rainbow effect going across them all. Over here, we've got a magical tree of time. I believe this one... Um, the time wood uh, allows you to speed up growing in the area around it. So if I, if I pulled up all these ender lilies and then planted them again, they'd grow much more quickly than they would normally. So these are all quite useful functions that these trees have. Um, well, two of them have. Um, so there's some, some quite interesting stuff in there. And I know Tristan has made a, an area somewhere with all of the um, where he's collecting all of the stuff out of this void miner, but I can't remember where it is, so I can't show it to you. Sorry about that. Speaking of Tristan, he's also been building a another sort of... It's... I mean, I was going to say a cheesy thing, but it, uh, most of the, most of the um, Minecraft buildings and farms for things are extremely cheesy and allow you to basically, um, ooh, I've flown straight over this, uh, allow you to create things by playing shenanigans with the game systems. So this is an iron farm. Um, and basically, the way this works is that it has some villagers in these boxes over here on the side of it and they seem vaguely happy but they're um, they're trapped in this box and they and their compatriots on the other sides are all close enough together that this counts as one village um, and that means that sometimes iron golems spawn now I presume that this box here is too small for them to spawn in so they spawn, the idea is they spawn in the water the water then sweeps them to the edge I wonder if I duck whether I'll be able to hold myself on the edge yes I will and then drops them down there through multiple levels all the way down to the bottom. As you can see, there's some orange down there. That's some lava. So the idea is that they um, they get dropped down into the lava, um, but due to shenanigans... Uh, let's fly down there and have, try and have a look at the underside of it. Yes, due to, oops, due to shenanigans, the lava is not very thick. And when I say shenanigans, I mean the whole lot is just supported by these... Um, by these wooden signs. So the iron golem falls down through there, ends up on the bottom of here with its head in the lava. That kills it, unsurprisingly. And then the lava, um, and then the, the, the iron it drops goes into these hoppers and then into this chest, which currently has lots of poppies and some, some iron in it. So as you can see, it kind of works. I don't know how long this has been running for. I don't know whether it runs when there's people, well, it only runs when there's people standing next to it or what, but um, it is at least producing a quantity of, of free iron, which is better than none. I'm still not very good at using my elytra as for flying around. Let, it doesn't help that the server's a little bit laggy sometimes, but yeah. Okay, so over here, Tristan, so again, speak, once again, speaking of Tristan, he has built a... He had built a beacon, but he's now moved it. Okay. Um, there was a beacon which caused you to heal more quickly, which is quite useful if you're using the, um, the dagger of stabbing yourself in the finger to make blood magic work. Um, it used to be about... It used to be out here in this space but it is now gone so i i don't know where it is but it was it was definitely a thing finally and i think i'll call it after this after this extra thing because I, I don't think i've mentioned this yet I, although yeah i'm pretty sure this was a, a, a last time that's interesting um right we now have what we call an explosion room and this gets the name from when you when you hand in all of your quests you have a tendency to just sort of drop stuff all over the floor so if i go in here let's click on the wrong thing so let's try the wild hunt one first let's claim all the things from here 
you see I've dropped a load of stuff on the floor because my inventory is full. But now we have a magical system here where if you do it in this room, it all gets taken away by, um, by, by presumably a picker-upper thing somewhere hidden in the walls and automatically put into the storage system. So we can all now come in here and complete quests to our heart's content, uh, safe in the knowledge that all of the stuff we summon will, just, will be picked up and useful things will happen to it. Um, can I get that one? Yes. It, the only time it doesn't work is for things like this, where you um, where you have to choose what you get as your reward. Now, what's going on here? Is this because I've got my wand of picking stuff up turned on? Yes, it is. So the down, slight downside of this system is if you've got one of these, a kineticator, to, and you'd have it turned on, then the system gets a bit confused. Also, the other there are other problems with it as well. If I come back out here again, let's leave all of that in there, so you see what happens to it. So the problem is, there's a lot of, whilst we have an enormous quantity of stuff stored in all of the storage systems up here, and a Tristan here to, uh, to decide what, what, what we're missing, there are also these, these storage crates up here, and these are getting, actually they're not getting as full as I thought they were. Maybe Tristan's emptying them while I'm standing around up here. But if, there's, if they're full, then the system down here starts to struggle, and starts to struggle to empty all of the things out that you're, you're producing, so it, it doesn't work, which I think is why this diamond and this, um, and these pipes haven't been um, haven't been moved yet um let's see if there's any more to, any more in my uh, any more stuff to do is, has anyone been doing these yes yeah, someone's been doing these let's try that one yeah so now there's oh actually some of it's getting picked up but there's also quite a lot of stuff that isn't so that clearly needs a bit more work something in here is is causing issues or it might just be that the system is very very slow we'll have to we'll have to investigate that and try and make it a bit more effective but it is still much much better than the previous alternative which was explode all over the place shove everything in a chest and then come over here and try and stick it into the inventory system so it's a step in the right direction so i believe that is all i have for you today Thank you very much for watching, um, and I, once again I apologise if I've been croaking endlessly throughout this entire video. Um, hopefully by the time we do the next stream on Monday, I shall be suitably recovered and sound a bit more normal. Um, but until then, um, that, that's been uh, this has been Lawrence plays. Um, what, what am I playing? Lawrence plays Minecraft uh, with the with the um, Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack. I'll be as I said, I'll be streaming this on Monday. I should be streaming. Um, Factorio Space Exploration on Wednesday most likely and these videos come out at the weekend as you're well aware because you're watching one of them and there's often GTA videos but I've had I've been struggling a bit for time recently with those so I haven't been making them quite as much as I do because they're time consuming anyway so thank you for watching I'll see you next time